I'm happy to introduce to this uh, webinar um, with John Gavieria. And John, um, John is a dermatologist. John, can you um, introduce yourself? Because I think you do a lot of very interesting things. You talk to me about plants in the mountains and research, and and you're a dermatologist. So I would know more, like to know more about you, and I think the audience also. Good morning, everyone. I am very happy to share this morning with you, Thierry, with uh, people all from all over the world in this uh, webinar. I am John Gaviria. I am a dermatologist. I did my studies here in Colombia in the biggest hospital for the skin in the world, because in our hospital uh, 30 years ago, we had 1,000 patients per day only for skin diseases. It's, uh, it's an amazing place, totally huge. After that, I went to Paris to make my MSD, my Magister in uh, Skin Molecular Biology. And uh, from that time until today, I'm still working in uh, deep research in antioxidants. 25 years ago and 14 years ago, we started our research in microbiota. Microbiota and microbiome mm -hmm. means all the mixture between the oxidative stress yes. and the world of, uh, of uh, microbes, of microbiota. Okay. Um, John, I think you're in Colombia. That's important to know. That's why you're talking about good morning because here it's good afternoon. Um, I'm personally um, Thierry Hertog, and um, I'm um, working in hormone therapy since many years. Can you come? We have problems with the screen here. Um, and I worked with hormone therapy, wrote a lot of books, and I'm fascinated. And we're going to do a very special session here, is that we're going to look at pictures of people that have been sent, and we're going to look at questionnaires that are uh, questionnaires of uh, actually uh, filled in by the same patient or doctor of the patient and we're going to comment and john has a completely different approach as i have but they can be complementary and give you news so our first case is patient case is and here's the questionnaire um, john would you comment on this because it's you who designed this questionnaire it's a reduced form but at least we do have some information here Yes, the most important information for us is what happened with the childhood of our patients. Means for us, it's very important to understand and to know if patients has born uh, but, uh, about uh, C-section, cesarean section, because when you have this kind of burn, you lost the opportunity to build your microbiota in your childhood. After we ask about the question about uh, the breastfeeding, because it's very, very important for us to build a well microbiota. And um, we ask about as well the illnesses in the childhood, because when childs had a lot of antibiotics, they have a lot of problems of, um, with, with their microbiota. So in this patient, uh, fortunately, uh, we know some information very useful. For example, right now, they have a, a, a diagnostic of, of, uh, of, um, of uh, uh, Hashimoto thyroiditis means... Can I interrupt you one moment, John? John, they have asked me to explain for people for translation that they need to click on the icon below interpretation to get the French or the Spanish. Uh, as, uh, um, Il est nécessaire de cliquer sur l'icône interprétation dans le bas. Si vous avez l'interprétation française, for Spanish, uh, I let you say it, uh, John, about the interpretation okay. icon below. Es necesario que todos los que están escuchándonos tienen un icono abajo en la pantalla en donde dice interpretación. Entonces, por favor, pongan el icono de interpretación en el idioma que necesitan escucharlo, en este caso español, Para los que entienden español y pueden puedan escuchar la traducción en español. Okay. So I let you continue. Okay. Mm. Uh, talking about these patients, he has very interesting findings. First of all, dry skin, uh, Hashimoto thyroiditis, sleep no restful, 
and level stress uh, with in eight. And this, this stress level is until 10 for us. And when patients um, said they have a very high stress level, that's a very, very bad thing because cortisol, we are going to talk about that because cortisol is a, a very bad hormone against our microbiota. Uh, um, this patient as well only make one time per week exercise. Means she has a sedentary life and it's a very special finding as well. Her energy, her energy, her vital energy is only until 4 p.m. When we see this kind of thing and the rush with uh, uh, serodermia means with very dry skin, we start to think about the capacity of the skin to produce the, the normal moisturization. And because we have a normal moisturizing way inside our skin, and we can produce our natural moisturizers because the interaction between our skin cells and our microbes, our bacteria in the skin and in our gut. So when we see a girl from in, in their 50s with very dry skin, we have to suppose a problem in the thyroid hormone and second one, a problem in their, in their microbiota. What's here our finding? He, she don't have energy. So if she don't have energy, it's because for us, she could have a mitochondrial dysfunction. And the origin of mitochondrial dysfunction is the dysbiosis. And this biosis is an illness of our microbiota. Uh, for us, it's very important to improve this mitochondrial dysfunction and this dysbiosis using probiotics, for example, and combining probiotics with food supplements uh, based on SOD, superoxide dysmutase, selenium, and zinc. Uh, that is our, uh, our approach to improve our patient. And as well, we are going to use on their skin, a mixture in, um, in first of all, stop the use of soaps because soaps uh, are alkalines, very alkalines, and the good skin could be acidic. And that is very important to keep an acidic pH in our skin to have a well function in our skin enzymes and in our skin microbiota. And second one, we will use um, in our patients uh, ammonium lactate. Ammonium lactate, 12%, is the best way to improve all the cornification process. This is the name we gave to the process to have a good skin every day. Cornification process. I'm out, or is it something you put on locally? No, it's locally. It's locally. Ammonium lactate uh, on uh, after bath using uh, our wet skin. We need to combine uh, ammonium lactate with uh, with water. Okay, good. Um, so there's probiotics to give ammonium lactate locally, uh, stopping soaps for the skin, because there's a rash in this person. Um, I, I showed you here. You see this rash, okay? Now, yes. you'll see interesting things that are also hormonally interesting. What are the hormones often deficient lacking in people with rashes? It can be cortisol uh, that can be lacking in this person. And one indication of that is that she has also brown pigmentation here. When you have Addison's disease, a lack of cortisol, you generally have um, uh, low cortisol, but you have an increase of secretion of ACTH that colors the skin more. The knees are more colored, like here. Uh, the elbow folds are more colored, and there's dark circles under the eyes. So she has that. That can be also the case. So 
Um, and we look here also, I don't know much more about the hormone when I look here at the skin because it's mostly a rash that is examined. But when you look at the skin here, it's very thin. And a very thin skin is typically for low IGF-1, low growth hormone. These are also treatments that can be given that thicken the skin, but that make also the person better. If I look at this person uh, just with the skin, what would I say? I would say that you see these brown spots, that's typical adenosine spots, and then these rashes, that's allergy. Um, I would say that this person actually is burned out. When you have low cortisol, you feel burned out. And when you have low growth hormone because the thin skin, you have generally a lack of recovery. Uh, you, you can sleep 12 hours, 14 hours, but you don't recover. Your sleep is superficial. It's not a good one. You stay tired. So this person can have exhaustion because of those two deficiencies. And I don't remember exactly her age, but I think it's in the 50 or 56, not? 56, 56. So there is also, of course, menopause and she's not taking, uh, I don't think she's taking treatments for that. So let me look back here. She's taking vitamin D, but she does. she's taking desiccated thyroid. So the thyroid is, looks good, but basically these um, doses are very low. So it could be that she has a low um, level because she has Hashimoto's thyroiditis. And like John said, she has very dry skin. That's typical for low thyroid function. So probably her dose is not enough. So probably the treatment includes here increasing the, the thyroid, uh, those very slowly and taking maybe very small doses of natural cortisol on condition her food is good. If she eats sugar, sweets, milk products that doesn't in grains like bread, it doesn't work with cortisol. It's, I would say I would even um, contradict taking cortisol when you have a bad food. You really have a food, uh, necessary foods like in the paleolithic type time, times. So it's, it's a food that is not with processed foods and not with a lot of bad carbs as we are used to eat. And um, because of her age, there is generally the levels of growth hormone and IGF-1 are about half to one third of what they were at age 20. She needs that sort of treatment, uh, including the female hormones that make her skin less dry. The main reason for dryness of the mucosa, for example, yeah, the dry eyes is a lack of estrogen. So these treatments should be treated in these women to feel better with certainly a better food. Um, we, for example, people who are on the thyroid uh, treatment, they should not eat proteins in the evening because when you eat proteins in the evening, they accumulate in the stomach the whole night. And there's a certain process of amino acids getting all the night in the, the liver. And that slows down. The most important reaction of the thyroid is the conversion of T4 that is not very active to the thyroid hormone T3 that is very active. So you people eat proteins in the evening and most of us do that. Uh, they generally wake up a little swollen in the face with puffy eyes and a little stiffness due to low thyroid function. Even if they have good thyroid treatment, it cannot completely be improved. When you look here, there's exaggerated hair loss. If it diffuse hair loss, it's a lack of thyroid. If it's uh, on the upper scalp, it's a lack of estrogens in general. Dandruff means that she probably doesn't have such good food that's typical for yeast infection. So I would advise really stopping any milk products and any grains that are not sprouted. Like we have sprouted bread in Europe. I don't know if you have that in Latin America, but basically it would be better to have um, um, avoid that uh, foods that are not sprouted. So seeds that are not sprouted. So I think this will be better because this is probably the top of the iceberg when you look at this. Do you want to comment any other things, uh, um, John, or we can go to the next one? Yes, for us, when, when a sleep does not generate rest or reparation, the problem that must be seen in the production of neurotransmitters and the corresponding dysautonomia. Dysautonomia, I don't know how to say in English, but for us, this is one of the effects, the final effects of the dysbiosis in our patients. For that, it's is very useful to improve all the microbiota, to improve their capacity to rest uh, when, when, uh, when the sleeping, after the sleeping. And there's an indication that there's a dysbiosis also because of Hashimoto thyroiditis that is often a consequence of a bad microbiota. I also think that she wasn't drinking enough water. May I just look here? Um, between four glasses of water, that's insufficient. And then you, the, everything works not as good. I just am working on a presentation on appetite, for example. You have more appetite and you eat badly, wrong foods when you don't drink enough water. 
So I think water should be at least one liter and a half to improve. Now let's look at the other case. Maybe you want to introduce it, John? Uh, the other case, oh yes, is uh, for, for me as, as dermatologist, it's a very special case because uh, she has, uh, he has, is a male, 33 years old and uh, um, uh, an illness named hydradenitis superativa. The hydradenitis superativa is an illness affecting the special glands in our skin, in uh, in the areas as axilla, ingle, and in, in these places, we develop a lot of huge buttons uh, full of, of um, as, as, as the name says, suppuration, a lot of uh, expression of um, a yellow production of, uh, of, of a, a very bad smell, very bad smell sebum under the skin. This is a, an, a, an, a painful nodules, painful nodules for the patients. As well, uh, he has overweight, is very common in this kind of patients. Mm, and the most important thing for us, he never had the habit, the use to consume a good level of vegetables. And when people didn't have from childhood a good level of vegetables intake, they will have by default and dysbiosis. And they, they have dysbiosis, they can't make the training of our immunological system because is our microbiota the main teacher of our immunological system. And when you have a bad microbiota, you will have a very bad immunological system because your microbiota is the teacher of your immunological system. So to have a well immunological, immunological, immunological training, you have to have a very, very well microbiota. And for that, you have to eat a big salad every day because the most important food and the most important nutrition factor for our microbiota is the vegetables, fruits and vegetables. And this guy never take a, a good level of, of, uh, of vegetables in, their, in her diet, in his diet. Um, uh, I want to see, ah, it's, it's, very, it's very common in this kind of patient where they have as well irritable colon. They have problems with their colon because they have a big dysbiosis, this big uh, colonic dysbiosis. So they will have this kind of patients, a lot of uh, intestinal symptoms and intestinal manifestations as, uh, as colon irritable, ir irritable colon. And um, the last one, wait, I, I'm going to see in my, in because- Here, you see? A little uh, to see a, la, and a little bit down so and is... mm, uh, ah, and we can see how his immunological training had a bad training a bad training because he have an allergy uh, and uh, uh, against against shrimps when you have any kind of allergy, the problem is not your genetic, it's your training of your immunological system. And as I told you, the main teacher of our, uh, our immunological system is our microbiota. This is very common in our patients. Patients with problems in the skin as hydradenitis superativa with very bad immunolo immunological system with allergies, different, different allergies, and very low level of vegetables intakes. This is the patient I'm showing. Do you see other things? So he has overweight. He also not, doesn't drink much, very few. Um, can I take over now? Or do you have still some things to say about the, maybe the the blood dis disorder that he has, or um, 
Okay, then, then I will take it over. So when I look at this patient here, I can like give more information. First, we see that he's overweight. So overweight can be that he eats too much, has too much appetite, but it also can be due to the fact that he, his body composition is not good, lack of muscles, more fat, and that's typical for hormone disorders. You see that the hair is getting a little short. That can be a lack of uh, testosterone, not an excess, a lack of testosterone in a too high, too much dehydro. You see also he has a more brownish complexion and I don't see the eyes, but I have the impression there are dark circles on the eyes. That means that his adrenal glands do not work well. So you will have a lack of punch and a lack of capacity to adapt to stress because of low adrenal glands with low cortisol, low DHA and things like that. He does have a lot of body hair growth when you look at that because there's also even on the feet. So he probably compensates the low cortisol by making more adrenal androgens. Those hormones can give more body hair growth. You see here, he has dark circles in the eyes as typical for low cortisol. He has also pigmentation spots and they are a little irregular. And that's difference with the typical uh, pimples with uh, people with red hair have, for example. That's typical for adrenal deficiency. He doesn't make enough cortisol, so he makes SATH to stimulate the adrenal glands to, to make more cortisol, but it's not enough. Um, okay, the skin, uh, because of bird growth, it's more difficult. But you see he has also um, what is called scleritis. And scleritis is typical for vitamin B2 and B6 deficiency. So he's maybe not eating enough meat uh, to get his vitamin Bs. So you, you, we need to check that. And I don't know about his conjunctives because that would also give important information. Um, here you see dark circles under the eyes and inflammation um, can also be low cortisol. When you look here, you see that he has an imbalance. Um, you're sh almost sure to find in his blood low testosterone and high estrogens, high estradiol. So uh, people with more fat tend to make more breast, uh, breast development because the, um, the fat converts the male hormones to female hormones. And that gives this sort of outlook. And so there's likely that in his uh, food, he, he drinks a lot of coffee or alcohol. So alcohol or coffee convert testosterone or stimulate conversion of testosterone to estrogen. So you, he feminizes the body as you see here. Um, uh, and the, the fat tissue here, abdominal busy can be also due to low testosterone or low growth hormone. He certainly is lacking growth hormone because his skin is a little bit sagging here and, and his breast is a little sagging. So growth hormone deficiency is almost sure, but that is the case in almost any person who has um, uh, obesity. So you see also that every scar is very brownish. That's typical for other symptoms. So it's a disease where people make not enough cortisol, so they get very stressed. And then the body reacts to try to stimulate those adrenal glands by making more CTH. And that gives this irregular pigmentation. There's a brownish color of the skin, but there are places where there's more pigmentation uh, uh, in, in, and especially the scars. That's very typical for cortisol deficiency and ACTH excess. You see also that there's a little um, excess fat accumulating. You're almost sure that with high dose, not a low dose of growth hormone, you will decrease that even if you don't change the food, but there's certainly some food adjustments to do. I'm also not sure he sleeps enough. If you don't sleep enough, you don't make enough of the good hormones. And you have also an excess appetite. Uh, you have to know that um, 60 years ago, people were sleeping one to two hours uh, more. Uh, but now with TV, internet, we're not sleeping enough and that disimbalances our, uh, imbalances our hormone levels. So you see here, um, so, how can we reverse this situation? Well, we first have to decrease the food intake, uh, but not excessively. And the food intake should be a, a, enough proteins and not vegetables and, and not too much fruit, but certainly vegetables and um, uh, meat and things that are not processed would be good and meat cooked at low temperature. And you see also that there's, for example, a bloating upper belly. So this is almost sure that this patient eats in the evening proteins, meat, fish, maybe in big quantities, and that's not the right moment. The best moment is in the morning, breakfast, or at lunch, but not in the evening because then the food stays too long in the stomach, and then you're in a flat position, and the food cannot evacuate. And then certainly a dysbiosis is just only because of that. 
Uh, so uh, proteins in the evening is never good. In the Paleolithic times, long time ago, ancestors didn't eat in the evening proteins. They never found bones in the ashes of the prehistoric fire. And that means that they never eat uh, meat or, or uh, foods where you can have bony structures remaining. So I think this patient will improve quite a lot, but he needs to get on a good treatment with a good food first, a good um, microbial, the microbiome should be well cared for, not eating proteins in the evening and eating more than in the morning. And then uh, needs testosterone, protomone, a blocker of testosterone to estrogens, stop the coffee and stop the alcohol that he might be taking and, and, give, and take some thyroid hormones. And that already will improve him greatly. Um, voilà, that's it. Um, if you, you see also the feet, this is um, a brown uh, yellowish accumulation. So he has too high levels of beta carotene in his blood, not enough vitamin A because the conversion is slowed down by low thyroid function. You also see that his, um, the tone of his soles are not tonic. That's typical for low growth mode. And uh, you also, these swollen feet that are more swollen probably in the morning is typical for low thyroid function. They're also a little bit swollen here. Uh, there are a lot of little lines here that's typical for testosterone deficiency. And what is very typical for Addison's disease, low cortisol, is uh, the brown uh, greases here. So they get too brownish. And then the nails don't look good. That could be low thyroid. Um, okay, that's too much estrogens, not enough testosterone here. So we can already see a lot by looking at the patient. Of course, this has to be confirmed in test, but it's almost sure that that those is that what I said will be um, confirmed. Here's a lawyer. Maybe you want to introduce this. Um... Yes, this is you know it's very common in our patients right now when we ask about the salad consumption every day, and they say, "Oh yes, I eat salad every day, but small, and the quantity is very important to understand." how is the function of, of, of our biological system because human being needs a big salad at lunchtime every day. In fact, we need vegetable at least twice or three times per day because vegetables are the main, the main uh, food for our microbiota. And as we know today, microbiota is kind of ax of all over our biological system. For that, they have a very special way to make the diagnosis of this biosis is the, flat, the flatulence fast after meals. Because when you have flatulence fast after meals, means you have a kind of communications be between your microbes, between your stomach and your colon to start the production of methane, of different gases in this level. It's not because the normal production of fermentation. No, it's a signal, a signal to, who arrives from the stomach to the colon uh, to have a fast, a, fla a fast flatulence after meals. Uh, and the other way, they have an ab abdomen distations frequently. Abdomen distension frequently means she has a dysbiosis. And when one person have dysbiosis, means they don't have the enough microbes to produce the neurotransmitters. And in this patient is very special because she is sad with anxiety and depression. Today, we know is the new way to understand the depression. The, the, the start of the depression is in our gut, but no in the tube in the content of the tube, means in our microbiota, because the capacity of our microbes to produce all, all, all our neuro, neurotransmitter, our, our uh, combustible, our gasoline for our brain. And fortunately, fortunately, our patients, uh, she did exercise at least four times per week. That's very important thing because the main modulator of our microbiota is our diet, is what we eat, but the second most important modulator is the exercise. We have to make exercise at least three times per week, at least 
to improve all our biodiversity in our microbiota. And, it, the, and we have to eat enough vegetables every day. It's not, it's not enough when people say, oh yes, I eat salad every day, but and a small one. A small one is not enough. The human being, I repeat, have to eat a big salad at lunchtime at least. Okay, good. Um, so when I look at this patient, it, there's been the thyroid has been uh, taken out or part of it, and uh, about four years ago, and she's taking Euterox. Euterox is a um, thyroid medication that only has one thyroid hormone that is the precursor to the most active thyroid therapy. Patients like this, where part of the tissue is taken away, do much better with the T3 and T4 preparation. So there would be a switch to a more efficient therapy would already help and, and improve. Now this patient is 63 years, so she is menopausal. She needs a menopausal treatment. She needs estrogens and progesterone. And don't worry if they're, it's well balanced, if the patient doesn't have breast pain, that's a sign of imbalance of too much estrogen, it should not increase the risk of breast cancer. In, in, if ever she gets breast cancer, she will get more less severe forms of breast cancer. It's more protective. So she needs more hormone treatment here. Homeopathic medication can help, but not enough. It, it, it is really, you need to have more efficient therapy. So when we look at the patient here, you see that she has her cheeks that are less firm here. This lack of elasticity of the cheeks is typical for um, low growth hormone. Growth hormone is elasticity hormone. And without growth hormone, we, we shrink and or we get loose tissue, we get more fat and we, we age quicker. When you look also at her, um, the eyebrows, I think she put some color here. I'm not sure, but it, it looks like she put some color here because there's not enough eyebrow. The lack of eyebrow in inner side would point to a testosterone deficiency. The lack of eyebrow that is certainly here uh, uh, on the outer side, that's a lack of thyroid hormones. And the middle eyebrow that is thinning, that is the lack of growth hormone. So there's a lack of growth hormone here and, 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 and lack of thyroid here. I, uh, when you look at the skin, if I can enlarge further, it looks also there's an irregular pigmentation. It doesn't show up so easy here, but when we make it a little smaller, we do have this impression, probably also low cortisol or adrenal glands are not good. And then she has lack of punch. When you go here, you look at the hair, the hair looks good. It can be a little dry and, and, and irregular rough that could be a little tired, but basically it's hard to say. But you do see here um, these uh, irregular pigmentation that is typical for Addison's disease. You see here better the eyebrows. It looks that she did put some color uh, or maybe the picture is not so good, but here you see also, then you see these little small folds. That is typical for dehydration not enough water in the skin. And that is found when a person has vasopressin deficiency. What is vasopressin? Vasopressin is a hormone that keeps water in the body. And you have many uh, aesthetical doctors that are putting Botox and things when they see all these wrinkles. But basically what you need here is more water. And that in 12 hours is better just by taking the right dose of vasopressin or synthetic derivative that is found in pharmacy, desmopressin. It keeps water in the body and improves the memory too. So this is typical sign of lack of water. It can also be in a person who avoids drinking water and takes a lot of coffee that dehydrates. But basically I'm almost sure here there's a lack of um, uh, the vasopressin. Also the skin, it looks a little thin here. And that's not only lack of growth hormone, it's a lack of IGF-1, insulin-like growth factor one. This is the most potent hormone to reverse aging. It is a very safe hormone if you know how to work it. You never give too much of a hormone. That's a golden rule. And when you give this, you um, will thicken the skin and that will completely make these little wrinkles disappear or at least there's a high chance of doing that. You see the hair here. Uh, it doesn't look gray or is it gray in the beginning? Because uh, I don't know, uh, because that would be a lack of um, MSH. And we go a little further here. You see this little uh, like orange peel skin, typical for lack of vasopressin. You give desmopressin the right dose. I would suggest an oral one, for example, they are better to put it sublingual and, and that will keep the water in the body. You see also that the eyebrows are too thin here. I don't think she thinned it herself so much. 
The lips look good here, maybe a little bit thin here. There could be low growth to mold. There's little irritation here. Um, that could be indicating maybe a wrong food intake, like milk products, or um, can also be vitamin B, a rash. A beautiful jewel here. And if I look here, you see here on the sides, fat accumulating. That's typical for low growth hormone. Growth hormone improves that as a therapy. You see that there's a little sagging a little bit here. Can also be low growth hormone. And the hands, it could be that the hand tone is not enough. That would also be not too soft. That would also be a lack of uh, growth hormone or a GF1 even more. The breast, difficult to tell here, but you see that also the muscles on the back are not so tonic, should be more tonic. Growth hormone can improve that. And a little testosterone in the woman. When you look at the skin here, it's, it begins to be a little brownish here. That's typical for low cortisol with more SATH. It's a little darker here. That's also typical for low cortisol. You see how thin the skin is. That's a combination of a thin skin, mostly due to low, low IGF-1, but also can be low female hormones and uh, dehydration due to lack of vasopressin. So this person is really needs water. Uh, there's not enough water in her. And, and you see also how thin the skin is, the tone here. You see also these brown greases Typical for Addison's disease. Why do the greases get brown? Well, these people have actually a, a tint all over the body, but they wash their hands. They never go in the greases to take out the skin, but by washing the hands, they wrap out the skin here on all the place except in the greases. So this is a mark of where it remains after washing your hands. Uh, and you see these grease, that's more difficult to be sure. It could be vitamin A deficiency, but it's here that we see vitamin A deficiency cracks. These fissures, it's typical of vitamin A deficiency, it also is found in thyroid deficiency. And the flaky skin is typical for a lack of omega-6 fatty acids. Um, so she needs borage oil or even primrose oil. It's not enough. She probably, it's also a sign she doesn't need enough vegetables because otherwise she would have enough of these omega-6 fatty acid oils. On the onset, you see also the pigmentation, a little irregular adrenal deficiency generally in these patients that regularize with treatment. So basically this patient needs some adrenal hormones, even cortisol and DHA. I never give cortisol without DHA. And I always suggest these patients avoid sugars and sweets and grains because otherwise the treatment doesn't work well. You also see little lines here. That's typical for growth hormone deficiency. And you see that they're a little whitish, the nails. So probably the feet are cold and that can be due to low thyroid function. So she needs some thyroid hormones, very slowly increased because of adrenal deficiency. She needs the menopausal treatments like female hormones and testosterone. And she needs cortisol and DHA. And if she has low blood pressure, she probably needs even aldosterone. Aldosterone is also water that is a hormone that retains water. Uh, vasopressin, doses of desopressin is about 50 micrograms in the morning. 100 micrograms in the evening, sublingual uh, to take, and that would be a uh, good treatment. Okay, next patient case, um, FM. It's a female. She has an, an retinal detachment in, the, in, her, in her right eye, and it means a complete loss of sight, and as well, diabetes, arthritis, and dry skin. For us, when we see a patient with this three diagnosis, we say she has an immunological senescence. Immunological senescence, to easy understand, is a kind of immunological system, very old, very aged. And just because diabetes is a model of, uh, of quickly aging, and as well, she has a sleep, no restful, Depression, she's sad, and the level, the stress level is eight in a, in a, eight from ten, means she has very low levels of neurotransmitters in her brain. Means she has and dysbiosis because the main production of neurotransmitters are in our microbiota. As well, uh, she never did exercise. As I told you before, the main way to control our microbiota is the diet, and the second way is the exercise. No energy. When people said no energy, you, you have to think, 
The first, the first thing is mitochondrial dysfunction. And the origin of mitochondrial dysfunction is uh, the dysbiosis. Why mitochondrial dysfunction? Because when you have dysbiosis, you have a very bad level to improve the absorption of micronutrients. Means all the absorption of micronutrients depends on the capacity of microbiota to process these micronutrients to, to arrive to the blood from the, from the uh, intestinal lumen. Um, and she has, at 74 years old, an exaggerated hair loss. We have to talk in this moment about estrovoloma. Estrovoloma is the repertoire of genes of the intestinal microbiota capable of metabolizing estrogens. We are talking about, an, about a very new field, the microbial endocrinology, the capacity of our microbes to make the intervention in the different hormones and the different enzymes between the hormones as the, um, as the estrovoloma. When, when we talk about estrovolome, we are talking about, about the capacity in the women to improve all the metabolism of est estrogens. And um, finally, she has the typical, um, the typical symptom of dysbiosis is the uh, problems in the colon, the colon with a lot of symptoms, irritable colon. For her, we need to stop the dysbiosis using probiotics and dysbiosis give a new problem is a new oxidative stress. We we meant a an a, a, a tem, a tem una tormenta oxidativa. Oxidative stress is a, a big problem. You have to improve using SOD, superoxide dismutase, and we use as well selenium, zinc, and a curcumate lipoato. It's a, a new molecule, very useful in people who has uh, uh, mitochondrial dysfunction to improve the, the oxidative stress inside the gut, inside the intestine. Okay, I have to note is that all. I see also again, uh, not eat, drink enough water, two and four glasses is not enough for the body to function well, for blood to go everywhere in the body. Dehydration is really something that should be avoided. Now, when you look at the skin of this person, uh, you see very prematurely aging. Uh, you see the little T9 uh, falls due to lack of water in the skin. And here it's almost sure that she has to go often to the bathroom at night and during the day, polyuria due to a lack of vasopressin. So she needs vasopressin. Some that she's 64 years old, but this is very not elastic enough. That's a lack of growth hormone. So she surely is missing two hormones here. You also have some pigmentation that shows that the adrenals are not as they were before, but there's a lot of falls and lines. So she not only needs growth hormone, but she needs IGF-1 treatment combined to reverse that. She needs to have a menopausal treatment, which she doesn't have. You see also the thinning of the lips is very typical for lack of growth hormone and IGF-1. Um, so this is partly reversible, this aging. Uh, you just need to give the, the treatments, also the little falls here. Um, I sometimes in people who are very aged face, I do mesotherapy injections. So I do very small injections with a mesot gun and I put that on the skin and that helps. And then six months later, there are still 50% less wrinkles due to the treatment if they have at the same time treatment from the inside. Also food has to be um, improved because often people who have a lax body have a bloating belly. And so you need to improve the food by various cases, I don't know enough information here to be sure, um, but there's also a lack of protein. You see all these little falls, the little falls is lack of vasopressin and the dot, uh, the sharp falls is also due to lack of water, lack of vasopressin. You see also here that the eyebrows are not so good. There are very little here. Inner side, then you're sure there's a lack of testosterone. Women need also testosterone. On condition, of course, they receive the female hormones. They do fantastic. Yeah? You can take women who's collapsed since depressed since uh, 20, 30, 40 years. You have all the hormones. It doesn't work well. You give testosterone injections once a, a month, and they do well. They, they can almost be the prime minister of the country then. 
So there's really treatments that can help, and this person needs the assumption. Eh? Here's a lack of uh, growth amount, and uh, we don't know more about the outer third, but it won't be so good. And you see that the eyes are probably quite sunken in the orbits. That's also another sign of vasopressin. So she has to drink more water. That's the first thing to do. And to retain more water, she has to uh, take desmopressin with growth hormone, menopausal treatment, and possibly also adrenal treatment. But I need more information uh, to be sure about that. Here's a case of no pictures, but just a questionnaire. But there's additional information here. Uh, would you feel comfortable to do this? Or would you want me to do it? But I think you have enough information based on your questionnaire to give some tips. Uh, this, this patient has a big problem because she has um, severe menopause and the hormone replacement treatment is not giving results. Why? Because the microbial endocrinology, because pay attention, she has a sleep node restful. She has anxiety, anxiety and depression, very high level of stress, no energy. No ne energy means mitochondrial dysfunction. Is our uh, is uh, like the our former patient, exaggerated hair loss means she has a big dysbiosis. And when people has this big dysbiosis, the hormone replacement treatment don't work because the problem of estrobolone, you don't have your main friends, your microbes and the genes in your microbes to improve all the, the, the general metabolism of estrogens. In this girl, we can see how is important a good microbiota in one patient because she has the bad answer to the hormone replacement treatment. And she has a very, very bad life because a severe symptoms in her menopause. We need to improve her, uh, her microbiota using the, the, uh, the probiotics and we need to stop the oxidative storm. The problem is a big oxidative storm at, after the dysbiosis. Uh, once we stop this oxi oxidative storm, the, all the microbiota can rebuild using the different, uh, the, the, this, the different strains of uh, probiotics to make a new ecology system inside our understanding. Okay, and so you would suggest concretely what sort of treatment to stop the storm of uh, oxidative storm? Oxidative storm. We use SOD, superoxide dismutase. It's available in the U.S. market and in Europe as glycodine. It's the only patent product with this uh, molecule. And we, we mix um, a, a molecule developed here in the, in the huge center of research here in Colombia. We have in nutraceuticals is a, a curcumato delipoico. I don't know how to translate in English. It's, it's a, a mixture yeah. between curcuma and lipoic, but it's not, the, it's not curcuma or, or lipoic, it's a new molecule. And uh, we use always zinc and selenium, always, always, and magnesium at night in these patients. Selenium and magnesium, okay, good. Um, so this person is suffering from anxiety and somehow depression, and she doesn't respond to the treatment so well, although she's taking thyroid hormones on low dose because she probably doesn't tolerate and was thinking how you couldn't be stopped due to the swelling, uh, because she, you have to have enough thyroid hormone to not swell with hydrocortisone. So basically this patient is having a very intolerance problem. What I usually do there are two things that really block the efficacy of the treatment. And that's first, a wrong food intake. Uh, for example, uh, you have low thyroid because you're eating proteins in the evening, or you um, are eating sugars and are bread, and that blocks the action of some hormones. You're drinking alcohol, so there's a wrong food intake. And also we have a big problem, and, I, and here we're going on another level, is that uh, many people have, tend to retain their emotions. And to retain emotions, what you do is you contract muscles. Now, and you have tense body. Now, when you um, 
get hormones to give more power to your emotions. So if you don't accept some emotions, you don't want to get angry, you don't want to be anxious or whatever, you have to retain the emotions and you tense your body and you don't react well to hormones. Um, so I, I, you, what I say to people, I say, look, um, express your emotions inside of yourself. You don't need to express outside, just express them inside. And uh, you can feel that your uh, liver is angry, for example, or is sad, is crying. You can feel that your nose is sad and crying. Your nails are sad. Your cells are sad. And then after 5, 10, 15 minutes, it goes away and you feel relaxed and you feel better. And, and then you can respond better to treatment. So people who retain emotions not do not well on, on the, the hormones and they have to do what is called what real medicine is body mind and soul they also have to take care of their mind and their soul and and it's possible and it's very easy i just uh, wrote a book recently that will get out on this that will explain how to do it but basically it, it's don't think it's difficult to change drastically uh, that's uh, i think a legion or something we believe and then we end up by not being able to do things because but when you once you know how to it, it is really easy and, and it's worth to, to work on these aspects this person will not do enough with hormones if she doesn't uh, do also some psycho or spiritual improvement and, and that will help now here's uh, said also it's pregnant processing is it needed while processing is given processing a complete different molecule than pregnant they do have some similarities but not in action prenatal alone improves the short-term memory if you take it in the morning not if you take it in the evening and uh progesterone calms you down makes you uh, protects you against breast cancer for example so they really you have to take prenatal alone if there's a pregnant deficiency which there is uh, at, at menopausal age uh, she probably has to do better apply the estrogens two times per day in small doses on the larger surface, not on the small surface. So transdermal estrogen can penetrate and, and during 24 hours can slowly be released. There's probably several little tricks that can be made to improve uh, the things. And then I, we also give often um, say to people, avoid some foods that inflame your body. And those are the histamine uh, releasing foods or histamine released foods. Basically, it's the preserved foods, grossly, and some other uh, foods are always a little histamine. So we ask them to reduce that amount of food uh, and then they do better. There are a lot of things that can be helped in these uh, person. The you know, question is melatonin oil instead of tablets could be a good solution too. There's a melatonin and um, Manon, uh, there will be another speaker, will talk about um, melatonin oil, what it can do. It, it's also a way if you don't tolerate by mouth, you give, because it gives adrenal deficiency, you can take it uh, on the skin and, and improve your skin. So, so there are really many, many uh, things that can improve a person like this. But of course, I need to have more information. I don't have any pictures, so I don't know so much. And based on the questionnaire, it's a little too, uh, too short to, to give more information. Here's another patient. Um, yes. Josh. Pay attention, my dear Thierry. We have the last three patients with common symptoms who always refer them to psychiatry. This patient is a doctor. And when we ask them to all our patients an exhaustive research, like the one provided by our questionnaire, we found a list of molecular alterations. For that girl, is our colleague, our doctor, fatigue, decrease of memory, mood up and down. She's always at, and pay attention, during her childhood, she had constipation, means she is dysbiotic from the childhood. Tonsillitis and otitis, means she had a lot of treatments with antibiotics. People think antibiotics don't have any side effect, except the allergy. No, 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 no. The main side effect of antibiotics is, is they, the antibiotics, destroy our normal microbiota. Because one antibiotic is very useful. It's a very useful tool in our medicine right now. But we can't use antibiotics every day for everything. Because antibiotics has this very powerful side effect, the destruction of our microbiota. For that, she has today abdominal distension and she had non-diagnosis or burnt out. What means she has, she has, she had, and she has 
and mitochondrial dysfunction. And the origin of mitochondrial dysfunction is dysbiosis. Once we improve this problem using antibiotics and antioxidants, just because the powerful of antioxidants to stop the oxidative storm, we will have a new reborn of our biology from the molecules. This is the power of these uh, nutraceutical products. We improve the patients in the molecular level. Yes, um, but she's taking some of those nutrients that you're talking about, like magnesium, uh, like uh, zinc here, a desmodium that is something to, um, that also improves the um, function of the, the gut. So she's taking a lot for her um, thing, but she still remains with problems. It was interesting that you said constipation is always a mark of dysbiosis because I didn't know that, <laughs> that it was specifically in childhood. So it's interesting for me to learn. Uh, also see how can her gut be good with just four glasses of per day. She's four or five glasses, not enough. She has to drink more water. And uh, she has stretch marks, pimples, or bites having long-lasting residual marks. That means that she doesn't have enough anabolic hormones to recover from those pimples and blights. Slight wounds or scrapes leave long-lasting residual marks, typical for a lack of growth hormone, lack of zinc also, but basically anabolic hormones like testosterone and even estrogens. And had laser hair removal, we probably she had an excess of hair. So this person, um, let's look at her and I, if I see a person like this from four, I know and I can flip it. She, she has a background uh, fatigue due to a lack of female hormones, actually. Uh, that's why her face is, doesn't have the good color. She's very deep uh, eyes in the orbit, so she's lacking water. She's not drinking enough water, but she also cannot retain water sufficiently. And some people who have to go to the bathroom too quickly don't drink water, and then they're even more dehydrated. And that's probably her case. So sunken eyes in the orbits, lack of vasopressin. Memory is not good in those patients. She needs to have some small dose of decimal pressin, the synthetic derivative of vasopressin. We don't have the natural one because I prefer always natural ones, but basically we have to obey with that. The, you see the sagging shakes, typical of low growth mode, but it's almost sure people with sagging shakes have also bloating belly. So there's also a problem of the dysbiosis that uh, John talked about. So you see also the lips are very thin here. That's typical for lack of growth uh, So she's lacking growth hormone. Growth hormone will uh, very strongly improve this uh, person, except that if she has adrenal deficiency and we have to look if she has brown spots, and she does, she will not tolerate the growth hormone so well because growth hormone decreases cortisol. So you probably have to supply hydrocortisone. That's the bidentical cortisol two times a day, 10 milligrams, for example, to tolerate the growth hormone. The growth hormone will make big change in this person, will make her recover and, and feel much better. It will also make her more spiritual because people with hormone deficiencies are often people who have too many complaints to be able to fulfill their spiritual destiny enough. So you are you when you get hormone treatments, you f are free of parasite emotions. And that makes you uh, better, do better your job, do better your private life, do better your spiritual destiny. You see also the skin, there's um, the lack of vasopressin gives this orange peel skin, more or less, dehydration, lack of water. And you see all these sagging and droopy eyelids, very good picture actually here, um, as typical for growth hormone deficiency. There are some possibilities of reversing this by injecting the growth hormone around the eyes uh, every three months for a year, for example, will improve about 50% to 70% less of this. Um, uh, here you see the hair looks, it's difficult to tell, looks a little thin, can be lack of growth on IGF-1. I, I need to touch the hair often to be, uh, and then you see here she has a bloating lower belly. A bloating lower belly is usually due to a wrong food intake. You don't eat the paleo diet, the food that exists since millions of years on earth. You're eating milk products or uh, dairy products, uh, or you're eating uh, bread or whole grain bread, for example. And that is difficult to digest, so it stays long in the lower, in the small intestine in the colon. So basically, it's also a problem. You see also this thin skin, uh, lack of IGF-1, and lack of uh, in water also, lack of desmopressin. So here we have more information. You see, yeah, that's typically also 
There's a little sagging here, um, beginning uh, and a little fat accumulation, lack of growth. More lack. You see also these brown spots, adders of spots. She's lacking uh, cortisol. The feet, you see all this flaky skin that's typical for lack of um, fatty acids, omega-6 fatty acids that you find in the birch oil or in evening primrose oil. But to reverse that, you need uh, maybe four to five grams or improve the, the, the vegetable intake. I think the best thing is to do like John says, eat vegetables. Eat salads, whole big salads, because there's um, the omega-6 fatty acids in it. If not, then you have to take supplements. You see also that it's a little uh, yellowish. That's typical in people with thyroid deficiency. They don't convert enough um, their um, uh, pro-vitamin A, beta-carotene, which has a yellowish color, into vitamin A. So they accumulate the, the, the beta-carotene on the skin. Even the skin of the face is then a little bit more yellow and the hand palm more yellow. But you see it more on the feet. If you look at the face, for example, uh, it should give an impression there's a more yellowish skin. Uh, I don't see it here. Um, but here maybe, here maybe there's more yellowish. The picture is not good enough to be sure. Uh, but you see all these folds, lack of growth tomorrow for sure. There's also a fantastic hormone that I cannot get, but I did work a time with it, relaxing, that is makes your uh, skin completely um, tense again, but it's not on the market anymore. So uh, if ever uh, one of the audience knows where to get it in an in a easy way, it would be good. Um, so that's for this patient. So this patient needs slightly thyroid hormone probably, but mostly uh, growth hormone in IGF-1 and menopausal treatments and maybe also a little cortisol with DHA and who knows, maybe some aldosterone, but that I need more, I need blood pressure measurements and things like that. This is a, another case of a patient. I'll try to make it smaller. So you can have the hole here, 48. Yes, this 48 years old patient, she, uh, he, his consultation is because eczema, dermatitis. Means when when one people has dermatitis is because she has no bad luck. Oh, what a bad luck I have because I have an eczema and I have a dermatitis. No, my the problem is real, a very bad training of the immunological system. And I told you first, the main teacher and the main trainer of our immunological system is our microbiota. Um, he had as well a severe acne during her adolescence, what means uh, she had a bad, um, uh, a bad metabolism, yeah, bad metabolism of, of, of about their their androgen, uh, their androgen hormones. Right now, he drink alcohol frequently. That's very bad for our microbiota, and he had uh, flatulence, fast flatulence after meals means she is as well she has a dysbiosis and uh, an abdominal distension when you have dysbiosis abdominal distension fast flatulence allergies to food and you have an a skin eczema you need to re, re, retrain your immunological system means you need to change the teachers you need to change your microbiota. You need to make an update to your microbiota to improve, and that is possible to do. And we we did that in our center, in, in our research center, center. We say we can take the problems with our immunological system and we can make a new training in all our immunological system to avoid this kind of allergies and, and re reactions as the formation of autoantibodies in autoimmune diseases. The origin of autoimmune diseases are in the, the, in the problems in the microbiota, and we can improve a lot of patients in this kind of diseases if we know how the problems in the microbiota are occurring, and we can improve all, the, all of them. So how do you improve a case of uh, retraining the microbiota. Can you give some small tips? They give an idea. Yes. First of all, first of all, we have to stop the oxidative stone. As I as I said, the first molecule we use is SOD, superoxide dismutase, because it's the main antioxidant tool, the main antioxidant enzyme of our system. After that, we make the different mixtures. 
using minerals of, as selenium and, and, uh, and zinc. And we use, for example, cranberry. Why cranberry? Because cranberry improves all the different ways the signaling between the bacteria in our microbiota. And we use omega-3 and, uh, and we use alpha lipoic acid and this new molecule, lipoic curcuma, and the and the the different antioxidants that works as antisenescent molecules as the different flavonols and all these kind of flavonols uh, could have, has a powerful a powerful um, possibilities to improve this oxidative storm as ferulic acid as uh, as even vitamin C and vitamin uh, and vitamin um, and vitamin D uh, to improve all this oxidative storm, and as well we give to our patients the mixture of probiotics using bacteroides and lactobacillus, the two different big families of probiotics, and um, Saccharomyces boulardii is 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 one of the the most important uh, ways to rebuild and, and build a new ecology system in our microbiota. Okay, thank you. That's very precise. Um, here you have him um, on the skin. You see that these large folds, that's lack of growth hormone, and uh, he's missing some thyroid hormones because here it's a little missing. And there's also very small little falls, so you probably a low vasopressin. Um, the, one of the worst problems with aging that most frequent also is that many people who are aging have to go to the bathroom often. They have to go to the restroom, urinate, and urinate. And so at night, I sometimes had patients having to urinate nine times uh, at night uh, because of this lack of vasopressin. So you can correct that by giving uh, vasopressin or it's synthetic derivative decimopressin. You see also that eyes are deep in the orbit, so this man is profoundly dehydrated and, and needs uh, decimopressin next to the growth hormone IGF-1. He also needs growth uh, the testosterone because at age 48, almost no man has enough testosterone compared to age 25, with being very careful that he doesn't get acne. That um, maybe you can uh, comment more on this uh, skin that is peeling off like this. I, I don't think it's sun uh, um, sunburn, uh, but you see here also skin peeling. Um, when I see this, the two main hormones that improve the skin is uh, thyroid hormones and cortisol. And I don't know always why, but it does really this thing. I'm almost sure it goes away when you put this patient on this treatment. Of course, I check my deficiencies with lab tests and things like that, which I don't have here. Now you look here, the hand looks also a little bit yellowish. So it's accumulation of beta carotene, pro vitamin A, and that is not converted into vitamin A enough. And that's typical for low thyroid function. You see it looks also yellowish here, yellowish skin, accumulation of beta carotene. He also eats therefore a lot of, um, I would say, um, uh, beta carotene containing foods like avocados and papaya or other foods that have or carrots, uh, that is almost sure. You see also these uh, nails here that have longitudinal lines, low growth mode, and this peeling off skin um, that can be, in, I believe, corrected by uh, correcting the food intake, the microbiota, and certainly also the hormones, especially thyroid. Uh, you see also here, um, it's getting a little fatty here, so it can be due to a lack of um, testosterone or growth amount. A little fatty, but not very. He doesn't have so much muscles, so he's maybe lacking testosterone uh, for a man. And uh, that's it, I would say. So you see also a sort of large doses that is stronger. You find that more in thyroid deficiency. So I would say he needs thyroid hormones. He needs probably to be checked for the adrenal hormones and you need some um, testosterone and uh, growth in this case. Uh, it, it looks older on his face than it looks on his body. Uh, you see it here. And when I suspect 
like wrinkling like this, I always think that the belly is bloating. It's not so much bloating here. It is a bit, but not much. But you must have some times where he bloats more. He eats probably in the evening proteins because it's swollen all above the uh, upper belly. So that should be asked to switch more to a protein intake in the uh, morning rather than the evening. This is um, again a case. Mm. This is a, this is a case we 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 see very frequently in our consultation. Women with very low libido, no sex drive, and cyst on her breast, very tired from childhood, no energy from childhood, lack of motivation, endometriosis, gastritis with a uh, treatment against helicobacter pylori, tonsillitis, otitis means she had a lot of antibiotics during her childhood. And right now she has some pro a problem named in the molecular knowledge, a, molecu a problem in the, in the molecular mimicry. Why molecular mimicry when we are talking about libido? Because the, the molecular mechanism the re related to carbohydrate mimics involve processes where peptides or other molecules mimic carbohydrates in interactions with cellular receptors or antibodies. Means right now we are talking about receptors. This, this mimicry can be crucial in various biological contexts, influencing cellular response in and signaling pathways. This is, this is very important because we think the problem could be just the level of hormones, but sometimes is the way to these hormones to act in the receptors, in the cellular recept the receptors. For that, the, the studies have delved into the structural basis of the peptide carbohydrate mimicry, because it's an interaction between peptides and carbohydrates highlighting the intricate molecular recognition processes involved when a peptide mimics a carbohydrate in binding to an antibody or receptors. Means, means we can change the response of these receptors using our knowledge in antioxidants because these antioxidants could improve and could change this receptor's activity, improving the hormones, uh, the hormone activity as well. So which would be the antioxidants they would give? Would it be, uh, again, selenium, um, vitamin C, zinc, or do you have other ones they would... The, they are, uh, we have a, a big possibilities and different cocktails, depends on each patient. And we have learned this, but the, the, the could be the field of our next uh, webinar because it's a it's a huge, a huge, a huge field. It's quite difficult to make a resume in a few minutes, but um, there are a lot of different possibilities to improve our molecular mimicry, improving our cellular responses and the responses of of uh, bi biological responses of all our patients. Okay, um, here, of course, there are a lot of uh, things that make you think there are still hormone deficiencies. All these symptoms here are typical for low testosterone. And this patient or physician should be uh, take an intramuscular testosterone injection once a month, something like uh, 50 to 70 milligrams per day with enough female hormones to counterbalance with maybe finasteride, which is a blocker of the conversion of testosterone to dehydrotestosterone. The woman doesn't realize but she can have an amazing result. This is a person, patient who is typically, in a certain sense, collapsed. And uh, this uh, intramuscular testosterone treatment makes wonder. The body gets firmer. It's very good for the arteries. The higher the testosterone levels are in women, the less at risk they are. With these injections, the levels are higher than the upper limit. But it's worth doing because you don't get any side effect if you're uh, able to add here an asteroid, which is a blocker of the conversion of testosterone to dehydro, uh, like uh, maybe five milligrams in this case for um, the dose I propose of 70 milligrams, 75 milligrams of testosterone enantate, that's the best, or cypionate once a month. That will be an amazing. Now, the problem is she does a lot of cysts. So to um, 
reduce and make disappear the cyst is possible to put iodine, the goal 5% solution on the breast during a year, year and a half, and it will go away. The cyst will disappear, it blocks the proliferation of new um, cells and the old cells die out of the cyst. So the cyst disappears, even if you have the severe recruit disease. For endometriosis, it's more complex. In my uh, experience, it's due to inflammation of the bowel also. So you have to calm down the bowel, improve the bowel. Maybe you go to condom, you have to get your bowel checked and improved by John. But basically, uh, next to better food intake, uh, microbiota, and, and so improvement in, in the gut, uh, you, there's generally low cortisol, low testosterone, low thyroid, so they don't ovulate well. And um, there must be a balance that has to be changed. It's not so difficult, but there's a lot of progesterone to give in these patients with endometriosis when you give them. So um, the progesterone you, she's taking is probably not enough, but it's a slow release form. So maybe it works better, but slow release forms of hormones, you only absorb half of it. So you probably need to take more than double dose to get enough. DHC is extremely little and uh, testosterone increases cyst and, and give breast pain because uh, yes, it converts a lot to estrogen. So again, you need an action of, I usually always use bidental progesterone, but in this case, I would use um, what we have here in Europe. And I think also in Latin America is detorgesterone or defaston that has a 24 action. It decreases the breast cancer risk by about 26%. So it's very safe and it helps. So you need, um, in this case, exceptionally a synthetic drift that stays long in the blood. She takes a lot of good complex. I take also prodoglia and neuro for my brain and I can take, tell you my memory is extremely short. So she's really health uh, conscious. Uh, but when we look at her, um, so she, let me see her age again, 56 years. Um, she, she looks quite firm for her age. And this is little lack of growth hormone. There's probably some adrenal deficiency here. Uh, the hair is flat, so there's not enough estrogens, but she, she has more estrogens, she gets more endometriosis of fibrocyst. That's why you need a much better progesterone for this woman that will permit her to go on higher amounts. You see, this body is not tonic enough. That's typically when people are lacking growth more. Also, the uh, eyebrows are getting thin. That's not enough. You need uh, to improve that uh, with the hormones. Um, Okay, so we look here at the face. You see these lines. If I do mesotherapy here with injections of growth hormone IGF-1, this reduces by half. And, and if you have a treatment from inside, it keeps on during six months. So each time you inject, you can reduce it by, let's say, 40 to 50%. You see also that the skin, it may be sometimes a little fatty. So you have to be careful with testosterone, but it can be due to low estrogens. And she's low estrogens, but uh, so so it's it's not so difficult to treat her. But again, you need a good progesterone that stays 24 hours in the blood, and the myconized progesterone, the bidental progesterone, the natural one, stays 16 hours on 24. So it's not enough for this patient. Also, there's a sharp wrinkle here, makes us think there's a lot of um, a lack of water in the body. You see sharp sunken eyes in the orbits. It means low um, vasopressin. You see also that this is a little weak here. Uh, so the skin is thinner and uh, not elastic enough, low growth hormone and low IGF-1. There's a difference between IGF-1. IGF-1 thickens the skin much more and the growth hormone gives elasticity to the skin. So the, you need at a certain age, I take at my age, both of them, and you need both of them to reverse what you see here. The eyes, they look to be well hydrated. So I wouldn't say there would be estrogen deficiency in it. There are some blood vessels in the sclera, the white area. That's a sign of vitamin B2, B6 deficiency. So it could be that this woman is not eating enough red meat, for example, or meat in general, because there's a lot of vitamin Bs in it and she should take a supplement of vitamin B. You see also these darker spots that are irregular adrenal deficiency. There are many people have adrenal deficiency because I, I believe that our life and our food is so stressful that the adrenals don't work enough uh, at, a certain, at a certain age. So it's not a wonder. This looks slightly swollen, but I'm not 100% sure. And that could be due to a low a thyroid hormones. You see also these little falls, certainly lack of vasopressin. The larger falls is lack of growth hormone. So most of that is reversible or at least uh, improvable. You see also here the skin, it's a little droopy here, droopiness of the belly. It's not, it's almost sure lack of growth hormone. 
that's that's sure there's some more fat here and uh, you see also the skin is a little thin so i don't think she eats so much vegetables because there's looks like it's lack of omega-6 fatty acid deficiency also a little bit more yellow so some thyroid hormones may be useful for her. so it's normal that at her age or above age 40 many people are multiply hormone deficient because the glands don't stay stable, even with a good microbiota. With my good microbiota, you can improve the situation. But sooner or later, you the glands tear and wear, and, and there's a little problem here um, that has to be treated here. Same, um, I'm not sure about the quality of the picture here. The hands look quite tonic actually here. And so I'm going to let an, uh, uh, minutes here um, for um, uh, uh, another speaker, uh, Manon from Canada, uh, who's going to um, talk. Manon, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. You're going to talk about melatonin and what it does on the cream. If you can be very practical, would be good. I think you will be practical. We hear you. Yeah. You, you can know. hear me? Yeah, yes. it's good. Okay, very good. So I, it's like a quick uh, 10 minutes presentation that I thought could be interesting because of course, as we know with the uh, aging of the skin, if we look from the inside out, we know that we have a lack of uh, fibroblast activity when we're older versus when we're younger. And the, uh, what I would like to address the most is the melanocyte and the melanogenesis process. What happens is that, and, and this is some, some new discovery that we need to uh, be mindful and more and more publication is that we know that uh, we know that you know as far as the decline when we talk about hormonal decline, that melatonin is also in the decline, and we kind of put it a little bit on the side. And I know you, uh, Thierry, uh, uh, talk a lot about it, but it's incredible that we always think that oh, it's produced by the penile gland, but in reality, it is actually produced by our melanocyte as well. Of course, we need to be mindful of the skin and the impact of the skin. So this attribute um, concern and a discovery at the same time of the benefit of using, for example, melatonin topically. Uh, so by working uh, with the melan understanding the melanocyte, melanocyte, sorry, is you understand that the dendrites here that distribute evenly the normally the pigmentation in this case will actually be hardened in time, and because and this will affect the entire uh, you know the entire process of aging. And of course, oxidation will take place. So I'm not going to go in detail about you know the difference between intrinsic, but let's look a little bit at quickly at the genetic versus you know what we can do as a lifestyle uh, changes as a extrinsic uh, aging. We've talked a lot, and you you did an amazing uh, presentation, both of you talking about the oxidative stress and how actually it could impact the skin. But from inside out, let's not forget the damage of UVA and how actually we can actually be uh, interfering with UVA. And we know how damaging and aging it could occur to the skin. But just a quick uh, side note, it's interesting based on uh, body type evaluation. So personalization of aesthetic medicine, looking at inside out the body type based on your bone, your muscular system and how it actually impacts on your skin. And I wrote a book many years ago uh, that was endorsed by both uh, Robert Goldman and Michelle Deloon from the American Academy of Anti-Aging, as well as uh, uh, Robert Goldman from the American Academy of Anti-Aging. And, and it's all about how we can actually, actually classify and how you can actually make a difference in aging based on your body type. So if we take the ones that are more ample genetically due to their genetic heritage, we'll have maybe a predisposition to cardiovascular disorder. We'll have a predisposition to rosacea, uh, cellulite, everything to do with vascular. So if we know this in advance, we will treat the skin. And I love how uh, Dr. John actually uh, emphasizes, say there'll be different cocktails. Because of course, if you, you, know, if you have a body type like this, whoops, uh, versus a more of an ample time type, you will treat it differently. So this type, the ample will have more predisposition to rosacea, where and actually when you look at their skin uh, on their normal eye, you see that there's no problem, but there's a development of uh, telangiectasia taking place. So she will be predisposed to rosacea. So in a one minute, I would say UV protection, mineral sunscreen, but it's quite amazing to see that there's a lot more cases of uh, osteoporosis. 
uh, in North America because of the SPF, you know, majority of them use UVA, UVB filter of 50. So we say use an, a 30, use a mineral form. And then if you have an angular type, that means you don't, you know, genetically speaking, uh, gen with your genetic heritage, muscular and bone structure will be more angular, more, um, you know, petite. Your feet and hands always are cold, for example, thin waist. Uh, you can see straight uh, shoulder. This particular body type predominantly, uh, you know, we said that their, their nervous system is super solicitated, their parasympathetic nervous system. In the skin, we know that they'll develop a thicker epidermis, um, you know, a poor connective tissue, so less collagen, aging faster, melasma, hyperpigmentation, and a fibrous cellulite. So the angular type is an interesting concept because yes, they will develop that thickening of the skin and the skin cell turnover will take a lot longer before it actually turn over. And they will develop photo aging, I mean, aging of the skin and their melanocyte will not be as functionable. Therefore the melanin, uh, sorry, the melatonin content that is necessary for the oxidative stress throughout our, our, our metabolism or melanogenesis process and our skin, a good microbiota and all function of the skin immunity will be affected. So this is why it's important to take all of this in consideration and all about uh, personalization. So in conclusion, let's not neglect melatonin because yes, it could make a difference in your skin. So antioxidants, topically affecting your melanocyte, but you need to get down there. So how do you do it? So to prevent the ROS, prevent the RFSN. Uh, There's so much publication uh, out there that you can read and have a, an amazing time seeing the amount of impact of melatonin into the skin and how we can actually do uh, prevention of skin cancer. We can prevent uh, oxidation of the skin and also the formation or the damage of our uh, SOD. So if, if we see it in the skin, we know that it's actually synthesized from the uh, serotonin and it's an enzyme, uh, enzymatic uh, reaction. And it's not just produ produced by our penile gland. So knowing this, it's quite nice to say, okay, what choices do I have? So some publication says, oh, we need 0.05% to maybe 0.3% and some recent publication up to 12 and 15%. What is the right source? My answer to this would be, do your analysis. We research in laboratories uh, for a long period of time and we know the combination of certain oils uh, put in the right system as long as you reach into the basal germinative layer where your melanocytes are produced to make a skin change, to prevent aging of the skin, to prevent oxidization. So I thought this would be uh, just a good uh, highlight uh, for you today. Okay. Okay, so we'll go to the question and answers. Thank you, Manon. Um, I think if there's a question on your presentation, you will uh, be able to, to give the answer, but we're going to base, give more chance to John to answer and, and maybe to me for the medical part. Okay, thank you for this presentation. Just um, in my experience, melatonin works for everything. Even uh, I had a, a, a uh, my sister-in-law, who is the twin identical twin sister of my wife, had uh, skin cancer here. We put here uh, melatonin here on the skin, and it was in a week time or ten days time reduced to uh, one third of the volume with the with, uh, skin cream. So it really is helpful. And it was just a small uh, cream, but it was extremely helpful. So it was amazing. Uh, so she didn't she didn't want to have a scar. So she didn't have a scar because it was so small after just a week or 10 days. Okay, let's go to the questions. I think we have question and answer. Um, there's here, Jabba who says, when a woman takes DHA and pregnant launch supplement and have uh, and it causes hair loss, how to stop the hair loss when they were taking supplements of DHA and pregnant on? <clears throat> Especially if she wants to make a baby. It's not the pregnant loan, it's the DHA that can give hair loss in women. And it's usually caused because there's not enough female hormones. So what I usually do it, I make them stop two months DHA, take again half dose of DHA and be sure they have enough female hormones. I don't give DHA without female hormones to women also in the premenopause. Uh, there are some questions about hormones here. I have a question that I think, John, you can answer. Do you recommend more antibiotics to treat more dysbiosis along with probiotics and the other things you mentioned? Uh, 
I, I don't think you will recommend uh, No, in, in fact, we don't need to use antibiotics to treat the dysbiosis. Dysbiosis we can treat stopping the oxidative storm and doing in the same time uh, probiotics because the probiotics has have a, a strong capacity to produce new molecules against the bad uh, bacteria inside inside the, the intestine. So, uh, and, and these good molecules are very specific, not as an antibiotic, it's the white spectrum. is against all of microbes or against all of our bacteria. No, our probiotics, they produce their own molecules against a specific uh, bacteria inside our uh, ecology system in our gut. So you, you don't do like certain nutritionists, they give sort of plant antibiotics like cuprosin or uh, oregan or things like that. You don't do that. You, you give other molecules or you also do some sort of plant antibiotic or only probiotics you do? Oh, we, we use probiotics and antioxidants. In okay. different contexts, in different contexts, it de depends on each questionnaire in, in our patients. What about the ammonium lactate? Is it useful for mucous membranes too? Mm, no, unfortunately, it's just, it's usually, you know, ammonium lactate is a very old molecule. And today it's not famous because it's very cheap. And, and the pharmaceutical industry, they have a lot of different new molecules and very mm -hmm. expensive. But ammonium lactate is a very old molecule, very useful, and I think I am the only one dermatologist in the world using it. Okay. Uh, Good. Um, um, at least we, we've learned that extra. We only have 10 minutes, apparently, for questions. Uh, there was some pressure. And um, so I'll answer your question. I noticed this patient is taking iodine 300 micrograms per day. Is that contraindicating Hashimoto's thyroiditis? It could be part of what triggers your skin problem. I don't think so normally that iodine 300 microns can be. Some people have allergies, so it could be a good idea to look and to stop the iodine 300 microns in patients who was um, uh, in the beginning uh, with the skin disorder, the rash that we saw in Hashimoto's thyroiditis. Um, but um, there's studies showing that iodine can trigger Hashimoto's disease or decrease it. So there's some uh, non inanimity to it. So I, I think. Uh, by tra treating the microbiota and giving the treatable treatments that take out the Hashimoto's disease, there will be an improvement in skin too. Typical treatments are high dose selenium, high dose vitamin D, and myo-inositol, and then some hormone treatments. Let's go further. Um, is there any relation between Hashimoto, microbiota, and necrosis, necrobiosis lipoidica? I don't know if you're familiar with it. Let's, otherwise, let's go over the question. How to increase cortisol and how to increase IGF-1 by either giving the supplements or eating better. For example, if you eat sugars, you put down the cortisol. So don't eat sugars. If you eat um, fat, more fat, animal fat, healthy fat that is not burned, not cooked oil, you increase uh, cortisol levels. In IGF-1, you um, increase by protein intake. So you can naturally improve, but not sufficiently if there's a severe deficiency. Here's the question, if the soap is too alkaline, what should be we use for skin when we take a bath? Thank you. First, first of all, don't use soap, never again. And we use, but we have available, that's only in Mexico and Colombia and, and in, in, in Spain, a um, new molecule named Protoner. Protoner is, um, a soap is not a soap, but just to explain, it's a soap to clean your your skin, but your skin became as acid after the use. Uh, but if you don't have that, you can use the Syndet. Syndet that is the is a possible molecule to don't make a big damage again you again your skin, but the 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 good. Uh, advice is don't use soap anymore. Just water. Just, Just water. water. Okay. What is your normal value for IGF-1? You can find that in my books. Uh, basically for a woman, it's around 280 micrograms per liter, but it depends. If she's tall, she needs higher amounts. If she's small, she needs smaller amounts. How to repair skin after cortisol stop because the cortisol thin the skin too much? Well, you need to give anabolic hormones. If you give anabolic hormones, you have a good food, it's better. It's also interesting that um, the higher the cortisol dose, the higher DHA dose you give, the less 
tendency there is to wasting. So you can give high amounts of cortisol with high amounts of GHA, it blocks it completely. So that's okay. Uh, can give advice how to treat pityriasis rubra pilaris. Uh, you, you, you can use ammonium lactate, it's very useful for that. Uh, you have to change your skin microbiota and uh, and you can take vitamin A to, to help in the treatment of pityriasis rubra pilaris because it's a problem in the cornification of the skin. In the last level of our skin metabolism. Okay, here's a question maybe more for me. Would you start Grotamon in this page from the beginning of the treatment plan? I would start, I start Grotamon almost immediately in my patients, but always I give them cortisol if they are cortisol deficient. So I'd be, I'm care, being careful. Otherwise, it's not advisable. You start then Grotamon later, maybe six months later in very small dose if you don't connect the adrenal deficiency. The second patient is there also liver gallbladder probably giving his oily skin and hair. What would you be your suggestion, John? Um, no, I don't remember no. the second. No, 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 I, I don't remember. <laughs> I don't remember. Okay, so let's go on. Maybe uh, one more question. Um, can you please please repeat eyebrow sign that is low testosterone? That's inner side. So this I have enough testosterone because my inner side is okay. I uh, that so in I bro loss is lack of growth. The growth hormone lack is in the middle, and thyroid is outer. Uh, I'm not sure about the question. It's in Spanish. Maybe you can translate. Hola, buen día. Well, sería la dosis de la dosis de vasopresina y por cuánto tiempo. So vasopressin, a hormone, you can take it lifelong if you have a lifelong deficiency and usually have lifelong. You can always stop after one year or six months or two years, and then you come back to the deficiency you had before. You won't be worse. So you can safely take a hormone if you do a safe dose and then for a while and then stop. But generally, you need to continue keeping the effects. You need to take the hormone. Uh, what types of exercise that help microbiota? Do you have all, all yeah. kind of exercise, but especially the strong exercise with uh, with heavy um, the first. I don't know how to say resistance. It, uh, resistance, okay, resistance. This is the the more useful. This is a question in French. Can growth hormone be found in the food? In which foods? No, it cannot be found in foods. Or you have to eat pituitary glands of animals, but uh, then it's not so well absorbed, so it's digested. So you have to inject growth hormone. That's the only way it works. Okay, that's that's it. Thank you for uh, now. My question now: to, Do you see the difference between hyperpigmentation due to sun exposure and low adrenal function? Do these pigmentation look different? And if yes, no, and not in my experience, uh, it's the same. Um, it's mostly people with adrenal deficiency, Addison's disease, that get those hyperpigmentation due to sun. Of course, if you have sunburns, you have areas of no pigmentation and areas of pigmentation. It's a little different, but basically there's very similarities. And it's mostly people with uh, low cortisol who get most of this uh, bad skin uh, due to the sun. What probiotics specifically do you recommend? I think you told that lactobacillus, bacterioides, but, and we, but, but yes, but I have to say, probiotics is like antibiotics. You know, you have to know when and what kind of illness do you have to make the right prescri the prescription. It's not take probiotics like that. that, that, that. No, 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 no. Uh, anyway, you are very welcome here, but we are going to do it and to speak, especially in that world, because it's an amazing a new world full of different possibilities. But it's not so easy, it's not so simple, but you have to know how to do it. Maybe one last question for you. Do you test SOD, superoxide dismutase, in blood before or not? No, because we for that we made our questionnaire. Well, our questionnaire is more is very, very precise to make what happened inside your body. And because the SOD is inside the cell. It's quite difficult to make a, a, a measure of, of the levels of SOD in blood. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, I'm going to show some other slides. Let me see here. Um, so just for you to know, is that for um, 
physicians who want to have training or, or even also, um, I would say, uh, there's a training program for physicians and also nutritionists that, that can be followed. So let me see if I can take that out. And uh, you, is, there's a cycle one of evidence-based hormone therapy, very good training programs in video online and also reversing physical aging. That is the most uh, sold model, actually female hormone supplementation, chronic fatigue and burnout, thyroid diagnosis, melatonin, testosterone in men, testosterone in women. So there are seven models of the cycle. One are available in Spanish, and they're, I think I can say they're very good. You also have a second cycle where I would advise those who would start hormone therapy to follow this course, the hormone therapy consultation, very complete, the adrenal hormones, where you get all the information, psychological disorders and hormone therapy, longevity for people who want to live long, but very, very good courses. There are much more than three courses here, exactly. I think six courses, that's a little error there. The cell sexuality, which is very good in oxytocin treatment, obesity, I'm just working on it. And I have also books. The latest book is Growth Among Treatment for Adults. Um, that is, I think, everything you ever wanted to know to reassure you, but also to treat efficiently with Growth Among Treatment. The Hormone Handbook, which is the basic bestseller actually in hormone uh, therapy. Atlas, the testosterone book, reversing physical aging was interesting with a very, very big textbook with before and after pictures of what happens on the hair, the, the, the face, the senses. And here are all our sponsors that we're very thanking that they help us to disseminate the information by sending to the data bank uh, the information. So that's really good. Um, and this is um, neurodiversity products of Manon. And here is, if you want to contact uh, us here, you can reach this. You also on, have on internet, John uh, Gavieras. Um, I think uh, he has an internet, uh, um, he has also a website and uh, on, he's on Instagram and he has a, a very good lectures too. So please follow again. And then I want to, if you want updates, if you want to risk it, you can do here. I want to let um, Manu, Emmanuel Denis, uh, give maybe a last word uh, to um, tell Manu, are you there? Can you give this last word? Yes, thank, thank you very much for this uh, very wonderful Manu a Manu. This was uh, uh, the gathering of uh, two big names and shots that are very close to you, doctors. We're very thr uh, um, thrilled as a Grupo de la, together with Bionuri, so from the part of Latin America, to give you more data. A lot of people were asking where the replay will be available, so be very yeah. stay tuned because uh, be. between emails and a lot of contacts, you will get the replay very soon by yours in the language you prefer, either French, Spanish, or English. So be stay tuned with us. And also there's a lot of congresses you will participate uh, Thierry and John, could you mention some of them where you're going to be present at and lecturing in addition to your courses, books, and webinars? Well, I personally am going, or maybe John, maybe you could first talk. Um, I'll be in Santiago de Chile in, in April in, in the Congress of National Society of Dermatologists, one week after in Buenos Aires in a special congress to talk about SOD, superoxide dismutase. And um, in Cancun in uh, September for a, 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 a Latin American Congress of, uh, of Dermatology and in, uh, in Cartagena in Colombia in the Congress of, uh, of uh, the All Association of Dermatology National Associations of, of every country in uh, Latin Silat. America and Spain, Silat. So when do, you have and you do when do you have time to sleep, John? <laughs> no. Not much, I believe, no? <laughs> you work full time also in your office. Yeah. <laughs> so um, I, I will be, I have um, the pleasure to give a workshop of two days in Frankfurt in the 20 and 21 of April. You can find that on our websites. Um, and um, I will be also on the AFRM. That's the biggest American organization for anti-aging medicine. It's called More Longevity Medicine now. So we're changing the name. I'm giving also several lectures there, also some basic hormone therapy and and, and uh, some very, I always give a cutting edge uh, presentation on growth hormone in this case. And then I will be uh, probably also in December in the AFRM and I have other uh, things that I think Manu, you you proposed that we would come in um, 
I think it's in Mexico, uh, in a dermatology congress around the 20 or 21 of uh, October. Uh, so there are a lot of uh, exciting moments then. Dermo Cosmetica, indeed, in October, this side of the world. This yeah. is very impressive. Thank you. We really hope, because a lot of doctors are asking more and more Q&As, we took note of those and we will try to answer one by one, because I'm sure there's a lot of interest. And uh, I wanted to thank you, both of you guys, and the technical team and the translation people who were uh, very, very connected today and helped making this translated in the right language to get to the right information. So hopefully this is not the only one. This was the first one, but we will be very uh, glad to foresee more collaborations between parts of the world and getting from one side or to the other from the hormones of the skin to the same conclusions, helping patients feeling and living better. Thank you. Thank you, Mani, for your cooperation. Thank you, Manon. Thank you, John. Thank you, Galia and other translators for the fight job. Bye-bye. <laughs> Goodbye. See you soon. Gracias, John. <laughs>